Welcome to the Kansas Department of Agriculture Milk Hauler and Sampler Video Training Series. This is Video 2, Milk Composition and Testing. In this video, we'll cover the composition of milk, the basics of milk testing, factors that affect the quality and safety of milk, potentially harmful substances in milk. Let's start with the various components that make up milk. You need to know this to understand why strictly following procedures is so important in your work. The components of milk help determine the monetary value and safety of the milk. Milk is primarily made up of water, butter fat, protein, lactose or milk sugar, and ash. The higher the butter fat, the higher the price paid for the milk. So it's really important that you take accurate samples. Butterfat content normally varies based on the cow's age, health, and genetic potential, as well as factors such as stage of lactation, type of feed, climate, milking procedure, and stresses on the animal. The exact percentages vary, but on average, milk is 87% water, 4% butterfat, 5% lactose, 3.3% protein, and 0.7% ash. Every time you pick up a load of milk, you will get a sample of that milk, which will be used for various purposes. At least once a month, the samples that you collect will be taken to a certified industry lab or the Kansas Department of Agriculture State Laboratory for testing. The lab tests include testing for butterfat content, added water, sediment, bacteria, antibiotic residues, somatic cell count, and pesticide residues. This testing must begin within a specific time from when you collected the sample at the farm. Test results determine the price milk producers receive for their product. Now let's talk in more detail about the various things the milk sample will be tested for. Butterfat content determines the price the producer is paid for the milk. The higher the butterfat, the higher the price because the fat tends to rise to the top. Improper agitation of the milk before you take the sample can result in the wrong price being paid for the milk. Obviously, this could be a very big problem. Adding water to milk is an illegal adulteration of the product. It falsely inflates the amount of milk in a load. Tests for added water are based on the principle that milk freezes at a lower temperature than water. When water is added, the freezing point becomes closer to that of pure water. To avoid adding any water to the load of milk, you have to make sure the transfer hose is disconnected before you rinse the bulk tank so that you don't accidentally add water to the truck tank. Also, if ice water leaks into sample containers in your storage container, this will produce a false result, making it seem that water was added to the whole load of milk. Sediment tests usually involve filtering the sample and inspecting the filter disc. A clean disc means that the milk doesn't contain dust and dirt from improperly cleaned udders or other sources. Many laboratory tests also detect factors that don't just affect the price or basic quality of milk, but also its safety for fluid milk or use in other dairy products. One of the laboratory tests is for bacteria microscopic organisms that can cause milk spoilage and even illness. Bacteria are virtually everywhere and some bacteria are harmful while others are not. All raw milk contains some bacteria, but there are legal limits on how much bacteria can be in a given amount. Lab technicians let the bacteria in a measured amount of milk incubate for a specific amount of time and then the colonies are counted. The bacteria colonies multiply under these conditions, but the amount of growth depends on how much bacteria was present in the original sample. Bacteria counts over 100,000 per milliliter, violates state and federal standards, and can be caused by any one of the following. Dirty equipment, contamination with foreign matter, failure to maintain proper temperature, or improper sampling procedures. This is why it's so important that you follow proper procedures when you're sampling and transferring milk. For instance, if you fail to wash your hands, you will contaminate the sample. 
This can create the false impression that unsanitary conditions exist on the farm where you took samples. Also, if you don't sanitize your sampling equipment properly, or you don't store samples cooler than 40 degrees in transit, bacteria counts will be higher than they should be. Improper agitation will also cause higher bacteria counts. You must allow the tank to agitate for its recommended period of time. You must strictly follow the sampling procedures you've been trained on, agitate the milk properly, and maintain your samples at the correct temperatures. There's a lot at stake. Laboratories also test for somatic cells. Somatic cells in milk are an indicator of the health of the cow, particularly when the cow has mastitis, which is an infection in the udder. Mastitis can be a herd problem or a problem with a single animal. A count exceeding 750,000 cells per milliliter is in violation of state and federal standards and calls for immediate corrective action. However, somatic cells tend to rise to the surface with the butter fat. So again, inadequate agitation can lead to a falsely high somatic cell count. The age of the sample at the time it's tested in the lab can greatly affect both the bacteria count and the somatic cell count. Samples must be tested within a specific time from when the sample was collected at the farm. The laboratory will also test for antibiotic residues. It is illegal for milk to have any antibiotic residues. Antibiotics are appropriately given to cows to treat or prevent diseases, but all milk must be free from all antibiotic residues. There are many reasons for this. Antibiotic residues can interfere with some dairy processes such as the manufacturing of cheese and yogurt. Some people are profoundly allergic to certain antibiotics and could die from exposure to them. And finally, when human disease bacteria are exposed to animal antibiotic residues, new strains of diseases arise that are immune to the human antibiotics we need for treatment. Antibiotic residue testing is increasing because the dairy industry wants to make sure that our finished product is residue free. Screening tests are performed on each load of milk before it's unloaded. Unapproved, mislabeled, misused, or illegal drugs are closely monitored to help prevent residues from entering the milk supply. Pesticide residues are another serious concern that the laboratory tests for. Certain pesticides that cows may come in contact with are fat soluble. This means they can contaminate the butter fat in the milk. If pesticides are detected in milk, an investigation will be conducted at the farm to determine the cause. And finally, a word about a toxic, cancer-causing agent called aflatoxin M1, sometimes found in cattle feed. When dairy animals eat feed contaminated with aflatoxin, their milk may contain aflatoxin M1. The association, or cooperative, that's marketing the milk does most aflatoxin testing. Some plants also screen tanker milk samples for aflatoxin. If sample rates exceed acceptable levels, the milk source must stop shipping until levels become acceptable. Thank you for watching video two, milk composition and testing. In this video, we covered the composition of milk, the basics of milk testing, factors that affect the quality and safety of milk, potentially harmful substances in milk, you can watch this video again or take the test.